Hey, I wouldn't normally start a video like this, but just wanted to create something that showed a little bit of the excitement that I got right now. Um, I finally got my uh, Romans and Celts on the table ready for my first battle with them. Uh, and I just wanted to share with you what's up on the table. So I'll get into the uh, battle report. That's really not a battle report. It's me learning the rules um, or refresh myself on the rules. Um, don't expect any crazy uh, tactical wizardry from me. Um, but uh, I'm just excited to, to have these there. And, you know, it's one of those things as a gamer that uh, always feels good, right? The culmination of a project. Um, and, and this is certainly one of those. Uh, I've, been, I've been working on these for a long time now and I'm really excited to uh, to put them on the table get them get them in a battle and you know I just wanted to share that excitement we all feel that as a gamer it's a little bit like a kid on Christmas morning I think and uh, this is definitely one of those days so thanks for watching let's go take a look at the forces and uh, see what we're doing so first up we've got our early Imperial Romans uh, led by the Roman general on horse, given light armor. We've then got one, two, three blocks of 20 individual each uh, Roman regular legionnaires, legionaries, backed up by the Scorpio, uh, 18 uh, auxiliary archers, and six. Um, Equite Alaris or Illyrians. Um, so that's the, the, the Roman force. Uh, heavily outnumbered by <laughs> um, this absolute horde of, of uh, Celts. I, I, I envisioned these being, originally when I was putting the force together, um, that they'd be uh, British or um, they're without, they're with all. Um, but I'm today, again, just, just running kind of a generic Celt barbarian horde list. Uh, probably my favorite model that I painted in a long time. Uh, the, it's the Warlord Games vs. Gedrix model. Again, here he's just the chieftain, backed up by a standard bearer or battle standard for the army, and one. Um, Lower level chieftain, I guess. So I, I'm sorry, forgive me. He's the warlord. He's the he's the he's the bucket guy and boss, or in top, and uh, he's got one one subordinate here. Um, and then again, same thing again. One, two, three, four blocks of thirty Celt warriors. Uh, they all come as as standard, which means they've got a mix of hand weapons, shields. Uh, Etc. And, and uh, here we've got three chariots, this block of 20 uh, Celt fanatics, Victrix models, uh, really, really good, good um, set of or, or mention line there. Um, here I've got 16 skirmishers. I do have, I've got, again, these are Warlord Games miniatures. I've got eight slingers in there and eight archers. For today's game, I'll just play them all as archers. Um, just to keep things simple. And then this was the last unit that I, I put into the force, the uh, Celt Light Cavalry, or Celtic Light Cavalry. Um, gonna be, these are War Games Factory. They are not, they are not fun to, to, um, to paint, but uh, got, them, got them done. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, you, you, uh, you get what you pay for. But uh, they're all there now and uh, We'll throw this all on the table. So um, I'm gonna play six by four, fairly standard, some hills, some wooded areas, and a larger open space in the middle. Um, I'm gonna play the standard uh, pitched battle. Again, no, nothing nothing crazy here. Um, just hoping to get a, a feel again for the, for the rules and um, see what happens. So I'll start deployment. Uh, I mean, you know, no, no grand tactics here. I'm thinking, you know, looking at this quite, quite logically, the Romans are going to really be the, the defensive line. They're not going to be charging ahead. I think it would be 
more appropriate that the uh, the Celts advance on mass and clash against the the shields of of the uh, the Roman legions. So I'll get on with deployment and then get back and see what we got going on. Our forces are deployed. On the Roman line or Roman side, we can see the Equites set up on the left flank, hoping to skirmish around the woods. The archers ready to, or positioned to inflict as much as they can, or as many uh, shots as they can. And then the big block of infantry or, or legionaries centered around the Scorpio and given position in the middle against this long line of angry barbarians where Shane learned pretty fast he needs to build movement trades for these guys. Even though I, I base them on, most of them are, are uh, Fordua, Fordua base, um, they're still, they're fiddly with all their spears pointed and swords pointed all in different directions compared to the very uh, disciplined ranks of the Legion. But uh, yeah, so we're all set and uh, let's kick this off, see what happens. I'm excited. Uh, it's okay, turn one. Uh, the Romans roll to go first. Uh, and simply moved the light cavalry around to their extreme right flank, looking to get around the woods and do some uh, damage uh, on, on that side. Um, other than that, the archers were out of range. None of the core units of legionaries moved and the bolt thrower missed. So pretty uneventful. Um, I rolled uh, for the number of turns for this scenario. I'm gonna play to five turns. Let's see what the Celts do in reply in their first turn. First turn for the Celts. And the center mostly just charged forward, uh, heedless, with two other units kind of being funneled behind between the woods. Um, worth pointing out, the uh, Battle Standard Bearer unit is here. He hoping to give his command radius to everyone in this in this um, wider block. Uh, the chieftain is is right there, or the warlord, I should say. I, I'll get that right. The warlord is there, and the chieftain is here. Uh, over on this side, the chariots are getting getting close. They charge forward. The uh, light cavalry for the Celts also uh, char or marched, I should say, not charged. And then the skirmishers were able to inflict the first kill of the game, taking out one of the light cavalry. And as I've got these on um, two to a base, I, I just use a little skull token that I have, or a little, I got a little bag of those. So um, fairly uh, fairly expected, expected turn. Um, I will say one thing, again, you know, observations I've learned in the game, uh, the, the rule book is not, we, we I think it, it's very much a, a product of its time, which is, you know, is, is good for, it's, it's good for what it is. Oh my gosh, it is, um, it's hard to find what you're looking for. I spent a good while just looking for the, uh, the range of, of the, uh, of the bows, which actually I couldn't find in the book. I, I had to, to search for it online and uh, it's weird. It's got all the other kind, you know, composite bows, long bows, short, short bows, trailer bows, which they're labeled as having, it just wasn't there. So, but um, yeah, a lot, a lot of back and forth. The, uh, the war band rules, the frenzy rules, um, you know, so the, some of this is muscle memory, uh, playing, you know, growing up playing Warhammer, but still, um, Funny, uh, funny how you become accustomed to those things, and uh, and expect them. Uh, you know, our expectations are higher these days. But uh, still, I'm I'm enjoying this, and see, we'll see. I I don't think the Romans are gonna um, do anything too unpredictable in this turn. 
but uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, roll in turn two. Turn two for the Romans. Again, fairly uneventful. They're just trying to hold the line here, keep discipline. Uh, the Scorpio was unable to hit. Uh, already kind of concerned that that's not a great unit to use. Um, the archers were able to inflict a grand total of one casualty on the fanatics. Uh, and over here, the really only thing of real any import, um, the equites charged or declared a charge on the skirmishing archers who performed a fire and flee uh, charge response. Nobody hit anything. The uh, archers ran or ran away a, a, good, um, a good amount and the equites were unable to, to then reach them in the, in the subsequent charge. So that leaves me in the, uh, or leaves the Celts in their turn having to rally the now fleeing troops and uh, prevent, I think, prevent themselves from getting a two ahead of themselves by, by creating any impulsive char or warband charges here. But we'll see what happens on to Celt turn two. In the Celt's second turn, the uh, skirmishing archers were able to rally themselves uh, handily uh, and reform their, their rank to probably take the another inevitable charge from the Equites, uh, giving the, a similar taste of their own medicine over here. The light cavalry charged the archer unit, the, the uh, auxiliary archers, who fired and, and were again able to inflict one, ca one casualty. Uh, again, two on a base there, so I marked it as thus. Um, and then we see the, uh, the inevitable happening, which is arguably a, a little more nuanced than just crashing all of this into, into you know, running straight ahead and, and crashing in here. Uh, the fanatics um, marched, the, uh, chi the warlord's unit marched. Uh, this was the, um, the unit that was originally over here and shifted over to allow the other, uh, the, the battle standard bearer unit to move forward with this, uh, this other unit ultimately um, trying, to, trying to funnel up at, at the back whilst the um, chariots, I, I thought about um, charging them early. I just, I think they're, they're so light. I don't think they should really be doing that on, 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 unsupported. So whilst, uh, whilst we do see a fairly inevitable charge building up here, perhaps the Romans are gonna surprise um, the, the barbarians and, and do a little charging of their own, somewhat blunting the, uh, blunting the attack. We'll see. Um, having fun, keep, keep, keep doing this. We'll see, I think if, if, these, uh, if these archers are able to, um, to rally, which I don't see why they wouldn't with the general being so close, I'm sure that's gonna help. Um, they could probably uh, turn around and, and, and cause some, some serious casualties here. Uh, but yeah, turn three looks like it will likely be the uh, the pivotal turn pivotal turn of this game. Um, so stay tuned. Things are getting interesting. Okay, Roman turn three. Let's start over here. So the light cavalry or the the uh, auxiliary cavalry decided to stop chasing rainbows over here and be a part of the of the bigger battle. So they, they turned around and started to move um, closer to their to the to the action. Um, but the big events here, so the two uh, oh first of all, the uh, auxiliary archers, forget what I said, they did continue running off the table with the with terrible uh, leadership roles. So they're out of the picture. Um, and the ballista, or the sorry, the uh, the Scorpio, was again completely ineffective. So never mind. Um, that being said, the two uh, units of legionnaires on the right side did decide to charge. Um, again, I, I, a little bit, you know, not really fully wrapping my head around the consequences of what happens when both of these forces clash. It was pretty interesting to see how it did shake out. 
where ultimately this unit caused uh, four casualties on, on the Fanatics, making them uh, break uh, and run. Uh, and despite being frenzied, which then in turn triggered a panic test in this unit, causing them to turn around uh, after failing the test. Uh, so definitely some line breaking here. Uh, however, the unit with the chieftain or the warlord in it, I keep saying the wrong thing, sorry. The warlord was able to hold, this was, um, uh, the, the Romans lost the combat but were able to, to hold uh, given their stubborn rule, which is pretty, pretty handy. I'm, I'm, I'm really starting to think the, um, well, they, they don't necessarily dish out a lot of damage. They, they are effectively like space Marines. They don't, they don't break and they got really good armor compared to everything else here. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's that. We're gonna see if these Celts can, can pull it together. Um, but already this is this has now opened up some really interesting decision making points. Um, I mean, should uh, and, and arguably a lot of this maybe be beyond my control. But um, you know, we're, I think we're going to see some charging here. This unit might be in trouble. Uh, this combat's going to continue to go. Will these two units be able to pull it together? What's this unit going to do? We've got this little encounter brewing over here between the two sets of cavalry, of which I'm sure um, is going to see a, a flank charge here. Will that matter? There's a lot going on here. This is, it's good. It's exciting. Or I'm excited. I uh, hope you're enjoying this. Uh, so let's move on to uh, the third turn for the Celts. A troubling turn for the Celts. I'll start over here. Uh, so despite being charged in the flank and front uh, with these two, um, the, the chariots and the unit containing the chieftain, the Romans were able to hold. Um, I really see their stubborn special ability um, as, as, a, as a real uh, game changer and that they, they, they lost the combat, they, they lost it handily, um, but were able to, uh, to, to shrug off the first brake test that they need to take. So, so they, they're holding there and they're holding up two units. Um, the, uh, the warlord unit is now fleeing thanks to, um, again, being handily uh, losing six or taking six casualties from this unit. Uh, and again, just, just running and, and, and breaking off. Uh, and this uh, unit, um, again, being uh, hit in the flank by the, the light cavalry, um, didn't, didn't really, you know, each of these Roman units is losing, you know, a couple of, a couple of men, this unit, they, they lost four, but they're, they're ultimately, they're holding and their, their leadership and their armor is, is really making all the difference here. Um, so unless the uh, unless the Celts can pull it together morale wise, they're they're all gonna run. Um, and again, fairly ineffective sideshow over here. The uh, the skirmishers took out I think another couple of 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 the light auxiliary cavalry, but really to no no major effect. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty interesting tournament. I think I think the you know, there's what you expect to happen and then the dice rolling. The, the Celts did have some fairly unlucky dice rolling, uh, but still, you know, the um, the Romans continue to hold and despite being uh, heavily outnumbered, they are, they are certainly holding their own. Let's see how they perform in turn four. Not a great turn for the Romans. Uh, one of their units, or the unit that was um, fighting in this combat, uh, broke and the chariots were able to chase them down, removing them from the game. Uh, over here, this group of, or unit of legionnaires charged into that Celt unit, uh, inflicting a couple of casualties, but it was ultimately a tie or a draw. 
and similarly here, the uh, um, flank attack uh, continued and only um, the Romans were only uh, able to, well, they, they lost the combat by one, but did inflict a couple of casualties. Um, and again, this is, this is one of those things I can't remember, um, but I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't find the rule that said once a unit is engaged in or has a flank attack in a previous round, do, the, do they, um, are they able to turn in any way so that they're not permanently just being flank attacked? I couldn't find anything that addressed that. The closest thing I could find was once a unit is uh, in, in combat, they can't move uh, other than to break off. So um, I might have to look that up afterwards or later. It, it, that does seem like quite a big, big thing. Um, it doesn't quite make sense to me, but it, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll play this for now. It's, it's, um, it's okay. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Oh, and the, uh, the bolt thrower finally did something. It inflicted two casualties on, on this unit. And I'm in two minds now, but the movement trays would be really useful, but it's a little hard to track removing casualties when you've got everyone stuck to, to bases of four. Um, so got a little bit of an odd, uh, odd looking unit there. But anyway, um, okay, on to Kelt turn four, and uh, we'll see what, what happens next. All hope is not lost for the Celts. Uh, the skirmishers were able with just a few shots able to eliminate the light cavalry. Uh, they, they, they forced them to, uh, to break off. Uh, over here, the, uh, the Celt light cavalry was able to fight the Romans to uh, a tie. Unfortunately, bad news, the two um, units of, of warriors here, including the battle standard bearer, and the warlord both continue to run. If they run, they're gonna be off the table in the next turn. The fanatics were able to hold, or to, uh, to uh, rally, I should say. And then over here, um, this unit, uh, faced with the choice of repositioning or reforming and hoping to hit uh, our flank or rear charge in the next turn, rather than go after the, the general here. Um, which is what the chariots are probably going to do. However, I'm sure the general is not going to stand around idly and let that happen. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but yeah, ultimately a quite an interesting turn and we move on to the last turn now. Romans go first. Infamy, infamy. The uh, pivotal point of this game or the game, um, the unit that was in combat here, uh, the Roman unit, um, <laughs> they lost the combat by one, failed their break test, and ran. They ran uh, 11 inches. I tried to have this unit hold and not pursue. They failed uh, to hold. Um, however, they rolled two sixes to pursue them, cutting them down and charging them into fresh contact with the Scorpio. Uh, so, uh, a, a terrible turn of events for the Romans there. Uh, and over here, the Roman general charged uh, into the uh, Celt light cavalry. Obviously, being only one model, he doesn't get any flank attack bonuses. Um, but we were able to cause one casualty there per side. This, this uh, combat continues. Uh, so, all together, we've got a uh, uh, Scorpio here that's in real trouble. This uh, unit of uh, legionaries who are gradually getting whitt whittled down in a pretty um, stagnant combat and the general. It's looking quite positive for the Celts, even though they've got two huge units uh, imminently running off the table. I think really arguably, whilst there may not be a decisive winner in this final turn, if those two units, even one of those units can hold, they still far outweigh the, um, the remaining 
Romans on the table. Let's see what happens in the final turn of the game. That's game. Uh, the Scorpio was thoroughly thrashed and then chased down uh, by the chariots that charged it. Uh, the Celts move forward, uh, sorry, the Fanatics move forward, didn't do anything. The Skirmishers move forward, didn't really do anything. Uh, the light cavalry for the Celts was gradually worn down uh, and then eliminated. Uh, but ultimately, what we have left on the table for the Romans, 15 men and a general. Uh, so, and uh, over here, uh, I know I said this was a pivotal part. Um, the chieftain, uh, no, I will get that right someday. The warlord failed to, um, to rally, but didn't run far enough to get off the table. The other unit did regroup and, and uh, was able to, to hold itself. So looking at the victory chart that's contained within the, the army rule book, uh, the um, two of the uh, battle standards for the Romans were, were removed or captured and the Celts own three solid quarters of the table. Um, so this is uh, a fairly resounding victory for the Celts. Which is pretty. I'm. I'm actually. I'm really surprised, considering a good half of their. I felt like a good half of their army um, ran headlong into into a wall of of Roman shields, and then proceeded to run away. Uh, but once that initial um, a, a, a attack resolved itself, this did kind of grind the the Romans down, which I actually thought would go the other way. The, the, there was some, you know, dice rolling certainly, you know, took apart. I think that turn five uh, aspect where the um, the legion they failed, they they lost the combat by one, failed their leadership by one, and then we're going to chase down with a with one point difference. That really made a, a big difference. They were they were at the center of the table. Um, this was a lot of fun. I'm I'm definitely I'm I'm, I'm glad I, I did this and. Uh, I'm gonna definitely play some more. I, I might try playing all of, all of the um, legionaries that I took were uh, regular uh, trained. Um, I might try and play another game where they're more like raw recruits so they get more on the table. Um, but definitely uh, the stubborn rule, the drilled rule, the heavy or the pilum, heavy throwing spear rule, they all, and all of the cumulative armor save that the, the average legionary gets really adds up and makes a difference um but uh ultimately yeah this was this was a lot of fun i've enjoyed watching i and maybe it's not uh, the uh the most common game to play and certainly not the most common rule set um but i i certainly enjoyed it and i, and I hope you did too thanks for watching